I'm pretty sure that everyone is excited to see what Monster Hunter 6 has to offer in the future and I'm also guilty of that as well. I too have certain expectations or ideas that I would like to see Capcom make when it comes to the future of the franchise and for that I have one question for you all. Will open world be possible in Monster Hunter 6? Welcome everyone, welcome back to my channel, hope this video finds you well and today we're going to dive into the idea of Monster Hunter 6 being open world. But before we begin, however, I want to address that when I talk about open world, I'm talking about concepts like Skyrim, Dragon's Dogma, Legend of Zelda, rather it's Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, and the Xenoblade Chronicles franchise. And you might be asking yourself, where am I exactly taking this? And to give you the perfect answer to that question, let me show you. This could be the stepping stone of making a good open world game. To give you an example, let's take a look at Monster Hunter World Iceborne. To be more specific, the Guiding Lands. You see how the Guiding Lands puts all biomes into one massive semi-open world area. Now what if we were to expand that, making it let's just say double or triple or even quadruple in size. A perfect example of this is Tokiden 2. Tokiden 2 is the only Monster Hunter like game that allows you to leave the capital whenever you want to either explore or fight monsters without being locked to a specific quest. If you were to take a good look at this here, you will see the overall map of Tokiden 2 or at least a detailed concept. Notice how in different regions are different biomes all scattered across the world. Being able to go from point A to point B and actually have the ability to cross through separate environments would definitely make it feel more open. If you were to take a look at the world map of Monster Hunter, you can also see here all the major villages that we played throughout the franchise. Now imagine you're in Dundorma, accepting a quest to hunt a T-Rex up in the snowy mountains. So from Dundorma, you can either go through the swamp or go through the open plains to get to your destination. But with a world being more vast and open, it has a higher risk of also feeling completely empty. So what can we do to fix that? A vast open world is great and all, but without world time events, it could be lackluster. No one is going to enjoy a huge open world with barely anything happening. Several games already struggle with this to where the map is so huge that there's just open fields that contains nothing, just an open field, which can be concerning of course. An example that I want to use for this is Breath of the Wild. Its world map is vast and huge, however, there are open plains that are just open plains. No enemies, no temples, no village, nothing. But with Monster Hunter, the idea can literally be endless. Let me pitch you this idea. Picking up where we left off in Dundorma, let's say you want to travel to Yukimo Village or Kokoto Village. Which way will you go? There is many paths to take here, 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 and here. With each path being different from the other, with different paths of course, you can encounter specific monsters to that region or you can encounter random hunters needing help either hunting a large monsters or a group of small monsters. And for that, you get to choose either to ignore or to help out. I mean, if you get to ignore, then the random hunter would just finish them off itself. Or if you choose to help out, then of course you get to benefit from the materials of the monsters and get rewarded from the hunter for helping them out. Rather, it's items that you will need or materials that you are not able to get or if it offers its assistance to you and you get to choose exactly what you want to get as a reward. The final thing that I want to make in this video is environment stability. We all know that in quests in Monster Hunter, the environment has a chance to either be stable or unstable. Now I want to take that concept and implement it into a real time event. Thing. Rather, if you want to travel to a different uh, village and on uh, specific days, specific times, whether it's night or day, it can either be stable and then quickly turn to become unstable. And of course, with unstable, you have a chance to encounter a random monster. But what if we get to encounter an invasive monster? For example, a Devil Joe or a Valstrax. And once it's in line of sight, you either have an option to either stand your ground and fight or run away as fast as you can to either get out of line of sight or far enough to hide so that you can lose the aggro. I want something like that to be implemented. Also the next thing for that to implement villages being attacked randomly by monsters. Another quick example because I actually spoke about this with uh, a fellow YouTuber by the name of Reaver Jolt. Shout out to him for actually speaking with me about this. I actually have a it was actually a really good conversation. Um, what if if you were to be at another village and then all of a sudden uh, 
a messenger palico came out of nowhere to tell you, hey, Kokoto's village is under attack by a Yang Cuckoo and you have to rush over there and you have to either prevent as much damage as possible, either slay or repel the Yang Cuckoo. And of course, with slaying the monster, you'll be thanked to get rewards and things like that. But you also have a chance to provide the materials of the Yang Cuckoo to the village so that they could bump up their defense or you could keep it for yourself. But if you were to give the materials to the village, then of course, the village has a chance to level up their defenses and depending on the type of level or what level they're at for the matter depends on what monster is going to evade next and I feel like that right there would actually be really good for something like Monster Hunter to be uh to be open world now even though this is just ideas or concept, uh, there could be many things that could go wrong if Monster Hunter were to do this. But at the same time, it would be something very interesting and very new to see just how free, just how open Capcom is willing to go to or go through in order to make a very unique experience that we can only have in Monster Hunter. So that's basically the whole take of this. So I do want to thank you guys so much for coming along with today's video. I do know that it's been a very long time since I actually made a video. A lot of stuff has been going on personally, which uh, it does have a huge impact on what's going on. So I deeply apologize. I do want to let you guys know that I am working on another Monster Hunter showdown. Um, it does revolve the new Monster Hunter Sunbreak update and of course, we all know what that probably will be. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment what you think of my ideas are. Do you think it's possible for Monster Hunter to become a real open world game, not a semi open world to where only a specific area is open world and then we have to go back do a loading screen. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. If you are new, you like my content, please hit that subscribe button. The freaking dogs decided to bark as as always, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace and <laughs> take care.